welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly uh, webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And uh, before we get the show started, I've just got one quick uh, comment to, to make for our viewers, because if I wait till the end, I will forget about this. Uh, I know because I'll be distracted by our guitar conversation. But if you haven't already done so, uh, please leave us a review on iTunes and post comments on the YouTube and subscribe. Uh, reviews really help us. Let us know what we're doing well, what we're not doing so well. And we just love to hear the feedback. So please post reviews, post comments, and uh, partake in our show. All right. So um, now on to the show. Jesse, what are you going to do this week? What have I been doing? Well, I had a discussion recently with uh, my buddy Chris about finger picking. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trying to get my calluses back on acoustic. You know, I, I think I say that like every time because it's like I, I get into a couple of days like, OK, good. And then my fingers hurt and then uh, I let it slide. <laughs> um, but, yeah, finger picking is pretty cool. Um, what's the name of the song that you showed me? Uh, going Home. Going Home. I have to practice. I have not worked on that, but I I want to work on that because that's pretty cool. Uh, It's different kind of picking than I'm used to. I'm used to like kind of the uh, the folk sort of, you know, John Denver, Jim Croce, you know, those kind of folky finger picking stuff. But uh, the blues thing is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a pattern either. It's uh... no. It's sort of I don't know. Uh, made up as you go along. Not really. I mean, it's kind of pattern-esque, but it's, it varies as it goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's one of those fun things to actually vary further as you play. Yeah, that's true. You can keep adding on, you know, hammer-ons and pull-offs and just keep making it fancier as it goes. Yeah, I was listening to the song uh, earlier today, and the solo that she does impresses me, too, on the uh, studio-recorded version. You can go on YouTube and find a couple of live versions that mm-hmm. people are from concerts, and some of those don't have solos, but the one, the studio recorded version has a solo and she's finger picking the solo. And it's really impressive. She's getting that sound, that speed mm-hmm. from the finger picking, which is so far out of my reach at this point that it's not, uh, yeah, it's not even funny. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the more I listen to that song, the more I like it. And the, the, the more fun that I'm having with, uh, finger picking. Yeah. I think, I know it's, it's true. I mean, you, uh, the solos that you get a totally different sound, more kind of more of a snap sort of, you know when you when you finger pick notes, um, like Jeff Beck was is awesome at that. I don't know if you listen to much Jeff Beck, but I mean back in the in the, well, I mean even modern stuff. But I mean the old Jeff Beck group, you know, right from the beginning, people get ready, whatever, and uh, it's just an awesome sound. You know, it has a snap that you just it's hard to get with a pick. So cool, yeah, absolutely. And I find I don't have very long fingernails, so I'm using a lot more meat on my uh, fingers and definitely get different sounds with that. And I don't, yeah. I'm not going to grow my fingernails out just to try to get the fingernail <laughs> sound. Um, I can't mind. Bro- I have terrible fingernails. That's cursed. Yeah. I, I chew on mine if they get <laughs> bad habits. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, um, I've had a interesting guitar week. Yes, you have. <laughs> usually when I say an interesting guitar week, it means I bought something. <laughs> Some things, actually. So uh, I was interested in checking out the Guitar Center out in um, Scranton, PA, uh, because they have a sale, these $99 guitar sales. And they had this one that was an Epiphone um, Special One P90. And... Uh, for a hundred bucks, I figured I've always wanted a guitar with P90s in it. This is pretty low hanging fruit, and all the reviews online said it was a decent guitar, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. So I figured I'm gonna drive out there and pick up a guitar, and that's what I did. So I will pick it up and I'll show it to the camera. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you can see it. For those of you that are uh, listening in, uh, on audio, We're check out the YouTube right. channel. <laughs> yeah, check out the YouTube channel and you can see pictures or, or just do a Google for Epiphone Special One P90. So we'll be right back. So uh, I'm narrating for the uh, audio only listeners. He's picking up a uh, <laughs> Epiphone Special One P90. It's red. It has a nice satin finish to it. 
He's passing it in front of the camera. So I played this puppy, and it's actually really nice. It's got two P90 pickups in it and a kind of a wraparound bridge. It's not really a two-pneumatic. It's sort of an all-in-one thing. Um, but it works pretty well. It's a bolt-on neck, which is kind of it's, – it's shaped like a Les Paul, but it's not an arch top. It's like a flat top, and it has a bolt-on neck. So it's, it's Les Paul-ish. But the P90 pickups sound very P90. I mean, it's uh, – they sound nice and ballsy. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I was that... impressed with the playability of the thing too. I mean, there's like – the fret edges are like just slightly prickly, but uh, not bad. You know, I mean, it's kind of typical. And the crowning and, and the fretwork is good. I was pretty impressed. I was impressed with how well it plays. Yeah. I mean, for it being a $99 guitar. Yeah. I think – Normally it's it sells for one thirty. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but it's just. I, How the I, heck do you build a guitar like that for hundred bucks? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, it's a good question, and, and I, I went going to buy what I thought would be a beater, mm-hmm. and wouldn't care about it. I actually liked the guitar a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't think I was going to hate the guitar by any right. measure. I just figured it was going to be a ninety nine dollar guitar for which I could test out P nineties. We could drag it along behind the you know car and you know relic it and yeah, but yeah, yeah it's nice. Uh, I got my amp plugged in so I could uh, play a couple notes. Sweet, so hear the different sounds. I highly yeah. recommend that. So he's picking up the guitar again and plugging it in. <laughs> Doing terrible podcasting by leaving the camera and all that, but then again, we're not professionals. You know, and, and to show you how level of unprofessional we are, I didn't even do a sound check for this. So let's see if you could hear it. There you go. You can hear it? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So um, I'll start with the bridge pickup. Nice sound to it. Yep. And then the uh, neck, I always play the same thing for comparison. And then mid, mid position. Sweet. So, nice sounding guitar, uh, especially when you think it's a hundred bucks. I have to say, dollar for dollar, this might be the best guitar that I own. <laughs> well, there you go. You get a lot of value yeah. out of the hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, just the in terms of like cost, you have to adjust for cost, right? It does it is it as nice as my uh, Gibson LP? No, right? Of course not. But that several hundred dollars more than this guitar is, yeah you know but if you just factor in the cost dollar for dollar and i'm a huge fan of these things go get one even after they go up to 130 bucks oh up. really that's true yeah just go buy one and if you don't like it you have a modding platform <laughs> that's true right <laughs> I mean, it's a bolt of a neck. Take the neck off, go to Wormuth, buy another neck mm-hmm. or whatever, all right, and uh, put in whatever. These are big soap bar P90 pickups in it. Uh, I think the wood's mahogany, uh, if I remember correctly. I can check the, the website real quick. Mahogany body. It makes mahogany a lot of sense. Yeah. They're calling it a rosewood fretboard. This isn't... It's very I, dark for rosewood. Very dark. And I'm not... I don't know. I'm not sure if it's rosewood or not. Um, well, it's uh, it would be strange to put ebony on uh, that inexpensive guitar because generally ebony is a little <clears throat> more expensive wood. But they must have treated it somehow because it's dark and it's very smooth. Like it doesn't – it's not as porous as most rosewoods. It, it honestly it feels more ebony to me. Yeah, but, it doesn't feel like wood at all to me. Yeah. Um, Phenolic but, or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um uh, P90R in the neck, P90T in the bridge. Um, there's one volume uh, control, one tone control, three-way switch. And then the uh, tailpiece is a wraparound. It's the first time I've owned a wraparound. And I definitely need to get this thing dialed in with the intonation. It's not quite there yet. Yeah. It's not too so, far off, though. It it's not. Much. It's not bad. Interestingly enough, a lot of times Epiphone will um, – let me just put this down – A lot of times Epiphone will um, say on the back of the guitar, you know, made in China or made in Indonesia or whatever, but set up in the U.S. by, like, number 23. Yeah. I don't know who number 23 is, but you've done a nice job on some of the other guitars. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this guitar does not say that. It just says made in China. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
And when I took it home, there wasn't a whole lot of dialing in that I had to do. It's a funny thing because now you think that um, with modern CNC machinery, um, the consistency is so good that unless there's a bad piece of wood or something like that, um, they can be pretty consistent, you know? Yeah. And so I'm thinking, yeah, quality control is good, especially if uh, – if nothing else, if you get something bad, it's going to be weeded out and thrown away. But I think they've got to do a basic amount of that anyway if they're going to stick an Epiphone nameplate on it. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, it's awesome. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Love it. And um, I was going to say also, for those of you wondering at home, I was playing through my Mustang 3 on the basic 65 twin setting. So that's one of the high number settings that it's supposed to be just a basic twin, no effects, but they have changed the dials, like the bass, the, the uh, treble, the mids, the reverb. They do have those, I said, adjusted. I like the basic settings on my, on my um, Mustang. Cause I'm not that picky about my sound yet. <laughs> so, and apparently that's too picky about my setup either. If I'm thinking that this guitar was set up just fine. Um, so then uh, keep going with the story here. So I got the guitar. I, I, I hooked it up to a Mustang One because I wanted to play through something like I have at home. I have a Mustang One, <clears throat> excuse me, in the store, so I played it through that. I wasn't going to put it through like a Marshall stack or something like that because I don't have a Marshall stack. So um, I liked the guitar, gave it to the sales guy. I said, could you mind putting this behind the counter for me? I'm going to go play some other stuff. I just drove 60 miles to go out here. I might as well make it worth my time, right? Mm-hmm. And so I picked up a few other guitars. I picked up a, a Schecter uh, Demon 6, Omen mm-hmm. 6. I can't remember which one. It had active pickups, but the battery was dead, so I didn't really get much out of that. <laughs> uh, I played a uh, American Deluxe Strat, um, which was great. Um, nice compound radius fretboard. Definitely has uh, um, sort of got me interested in that. As a, as a future purchase. Some You'll kind of own one. I know it. One day. Uh, I will eventually. It's the question of when. It's, it's how long from it's now. It's too bad they don't make them in black. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I wish they did. Um, or actually a nice sunburst. I don't know if they make them in sunburst or not. With yeah, I think they do. think they do. Okay. So yeah, I would go with that. I want black, but I could live with the sunburst. Uh, I played a few other things as well. And then uh, I saw a F- Epiphone Florentine. Um up on the top shelf that uh, the gentleman at the store got down for me. And so I started to play it. And, I, and my <laughs> wife was with me. I looked at her and said, this is a nice guitar. She says, you should buy it. I'm like, wow, yeah, she's a keeper. And uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I really can't buy this. I don't, I don't know, whatever. You know what the best accessory for a $100 guitar is? A more expensive more guitar. expensive guitar, <laughs> yes. So... So she uh, goes and sits down on one of the stools or whatever about where near where I was. She goes, just keep playing it. Which, of course, this type, at this point, I'm greenlit, right? Like, I'm greenlighted to buy this guitar, you know? Right. And so I keep playing it and keep playing it. And I, what happens is I get afraid that I'll regret not getting it because I liked it so much. Like the Strat <laughs> like a few the weeks strat. ago. <laughs> like the Strat a few weeks ago, which I still regret. Um, so I went ahead and picked it up. So let me show you what it is. So he's now picking up. <laughs> it's basically a, a semi-hollow body Les Paul. Look at that. It's got like the honey burst, sunburst finish on it with the flame maple um, top. Very nice. F holes that are uh, painted black behind them, which make it look sharper, actually. Oh, yeah. That's one thing I don't like about the court is there's no internal paint. So you actually see the wood mark. And it's not, and it's not like they were real... I don't know, picky about the way the wood uh, working marks are in the inside on the court. Right. Well, my 339 is that way, too. It's not painted on the inside. Yeah. But that painting those F-holes on the inside, that, I don't think that's expensive, and that's a nice touch. It is. The only thing you can do better is maybe put some battery power flashing LEDs in there. Yeah. Yeah, which I might do. I'm going to hot That would be that. awesome. Put some so, ground effects on my guitar. <laughs> yeah. Or blue lights when you're playing the blues or whatever. Yeah, and so flashing sweet. red with rock or, or, or death metal. I That's don't know. right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'll play the guitar here in a moment. But let me um, just go through a couple specs for those of you uh, listening at home, thinking about maybe getting something like this. Uh, there's a lot more specs online for this guitar than the other one. 
Uh, they're saying it's a select maple with a triple A flame maple veneer. That's the top. The mm. body's mahogany. The neck is mahogany. It's probably a mahogany uh, core in the middle, too, I would guess. Uh, the semi hollow? Probably, yeah. Probably. Also mahogany in here. It's a 1960s slim taper D profile neck. I like the neck. It's a little glossy. Well, it's actually quite glossy. It on is the back. quite glossy. Yeah. But I don't mind that so much. I prefer the less gloss, but I, I to me it doesn't really uh, affect my playing too much. Uh, it's glued in with um, the, your Gibson scale length rosewood uh, fretboard with uh, the pearloid trapezoid inlays. The pickups are Pro Bucker 2 in the neck and 3 in the bridge, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. It sounds good. Coil tapping, which is really nice uh, to have that on a guitar because it makes it so you take only one with you when you go somewhere. Yeah, kind of. Unless you're looking for that Fender single coil sound. Right. Right. Uh, but in general, if I'm going somewhere to play, good enough for government work. I'm not that good of a player to make it matter. Um, let's see, 12 inch rated fretboard, uh, 22 frets, medium jumbo, and, uh, you know, nice basic tuners. Les Paul, except yeah, basic Les Paul. Yeah. Nice tuners. And actually, the other guitar is, is it, once they get the guitar tuned, it stays in tune. That's impressive for a hundred dollar guitar. <laughs> yeah, I tuned it yesterday. Much more expensive guitars that didn't stay in tune. <laughs> oh yeah, so do I. I've got several hanging behind me that still stay in that well. I tuned the guitar yesterday. Picked it up this afternoon after I got back from work. Still in tune. You got the so, good one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, play a few notes on the Florentine, so you guys can hear that. I like the shape of that neck. It, I was surprised actually when I played it that um, it feels a lot like the court, or I guess I should say the court feels a lot like it. So they must have used that 60s D shape sort of as a template when they made that uh, my court guitar. Yeah, my Strat has a C shape. Um, and I noticed, I guess, a little bit of a difference, but it's not, I'm not so picky of a player that it's like, oh my God, the C is this huge change from, you know, from D. No, because the thickness isn't much more. I mean, it's still a, a, a slim neck. It's just got a little more shoulder to it, you know. And truthfully, I, I think I prefer the C shape a little more, but it's nice to have the change. Because yeah. my Parker, well, they're ultra thin, but they have that C shape to them. And it's nice to just have something a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Frets are a little bit pointy, a little bit out here on the edges, but not not terrible. So let me uh, plug in same amp settings, and uh, we'll start with the the neck pickup. <laughs> Phone coil, coil tapping, so this would be the uh, neck coil tap. Oops, bridge coil tap. And then, just for the heck of it, middle position, bridge single, neck double. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to sound like. I haven't tried this before. <laughs> Mellow. Mellow. Do uh, both of them coil tapped. Oh, everything's one ten too. By the way, all oh, everything's open. I like that position, but you know, with split buckers, it, it's just not as strong. It's, you know. No. Yeah, that's why one of my favorite tweaks is uh, a series connection with either single coils or split buckers. There's a wiring, a Jimmy Page wiring is known as, and one of the things that it does is you can tap the. It's actually splitting, but you get one coil of each of the humbuckers, but then connect them in series, so it's a more powerful sound. Basically, makes um, the kind of a humbucker, but they're they're farther apart, so they sense the string more. I don't want to say more stratty, but in a different way. And that's a really neat sound that I like. 
And when I get my baby back, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe a future show in a not too distant future should be all about uh, pickup wiring. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> we could. That might be a two-hour show. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. I have uh, my old baby before I got into the the ho- uh, hollow body and the Parkers was a uh, a carbon neck on an Ibanez radius body with humbucker single humbucker, and it had I think 19 different sounds because I had the five way position and then a uh, a six position rotary switch because I could fit it where another knob was, you know, and. Um, and I think there was a, another push-pull split. So there's all kinds of variants between like I could do like the neck and just the neck and just the bridge, single coil, a parallel or series. There was an out-of-phase position. There's all kinds of stuff. Wow. But then I played the Parker and it's just so much lighter and everything. It's like, oh, I never, never play the old one again. <laughs> right, right. I keep intending to like do all that switching stuff with one of my you know newer guitars, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And they're skinny guitars, so there's not that much wiring room. And some of these switches are like deep; <laughs> they take some space. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely. I I would be interested in opening up the um, the special with P90s to, to see what the wiring looks like in there. Pretty simple. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's pretty simple, but that's out of curiosity uh, to see what. Uh, what a hundred dollar wiring looks like. Oh, well, yeah. Don't pay too much attention to the quality of the pots. In that right. copy, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. But you know, it's not like, I mean, truthfully, I got a thousand dollar guitar here that has crap pots in it too. I mean, they're all guilty. Yeah. You know, it's just a place that you can easily save a few bucks and just, you know, so that's one of the nice things to do is to just replace stuff with better quality. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking about this uh, special one, and maybe take the tuners out of it. I mean, tuners are perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. But <laughs> put some spurs hells on there. <laughs> put some nice tuners in there. Nicer tuners, right? And uh, there's some like un- unbranded tuner. There's no no thing on the back. The uh, yeah. the Florentine on the back. They they look like the Clusons I have on my Gibson, but these are called uh, Epiphone Deluxe tuners. Mm-hmm. So at least I, they're branded. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there is that. But, you know, put some tuners in, uh, put maybe some different pots in. Mm-hmm. What else would you do to it? I don't know. You know, a, a P90 is not really that complicated a pickup. Man, I, I'm, I, I'm not really a connoisseur of P90 sounds. I've never I have never had and still don't a, a P90 pickup uh, guitar. And so it's sort of. Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know how to judge. I've never like done that. Sit and play a chord. Play, plug in another guitar. Play the same chord and right. try to. You know what I mean? I've never done that sort of analysis with that pickup. So right. if you got like a real Duncan or you know Gibson or whatever P ninety, how much different it would sound? I don't know. I don't know. But here's you know the interesting thing is I'm only a hundred dollars into this guitar. It's true. That's you know, true. and so I could probably put three hundred dollars worth of parts in it. <laughs> That's right. Still have a bargain guitar. Because <laughs> I mean, I love the neck. I love the way the body feels. You know, yeah. that's that's a lot of it, right? You there. know, uh, guitar fetish is having a Cinco de Mayo sale. <laughs> don't tell me that. I think I'm I'm, I'm cut off for a little while. You know? That's funny. So, I was looking at their clearance section today, and it's just kind of like trying to come up with an excuse to buy pickups that I don't need. I've got oh, yeah, four yeah, yeah. of them. It's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, I have to say, though, it felt pretty awesome to be walking out of the store with a guitar in each hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, double fisting, no doubt. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. And <laughs> here's the thing. I I had no plans to buy anything. So when we um, we left, Gail, uh, my wife asked me, are you going to take a case with you? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just buying a beater. I don't care. I'm just going to the back of the car. <laughs> <go."> right? <laughs> that was the plan. And so as I'm walking out of the store, I'm like, well, crap, what am I going to do with this guitar? Well, fortunately, we had, uh, you saw the dog walk by, those of you that are watching on YouTube, we had her blankets in the back of the car, so we basically just wrapped the guitars up in those blankets, and it uh, it worked pretty well. So it's nice and safe, even if it has a little fur and it smells like dog. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to get some dog hair off of the floor. But, no, I, it's, uh, you know, it's just like the entire time I was stuck into an accident. I mean, I, I was concerned about my life and limb, but, you know, cuts heal, uh, guitars don't. And so... <laughs> 
I'm like, oh, it's all I want. No evasive maneuvers, you know? Can't, no, <laughs> right. no weird driving. Oh, that's funny. So, yeah. So that was uh, my uh, uh, awesome week. I, 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 re- I recommend both guitars. I think Epiphone has um, done a nice job with both of those instruments. And as our listeners know, we're not sponsored by Epiphone or any of the products no looking at the wall behind you you should be (laughs) somebody should be throwing money my way that's true (laughs) like the epiphone king back here well yeah i've got three epiphones now uh well that's right two of them are gibsons yeah 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 two of them are gibsons the sg and the lp are are gibsons but on the back wall there but the uh the 339 is an epiphone and like i said we're not sponsored by them but i don't have a hesitation to say that they make great guitars they really do. I, you know, they, they have that um, um, bang for your buck thing down really well. I mean, they can really hang, and it's it's just amazing what you get. And not to badmouth Gibson, but, you know, I'm all about value. <laughs> you know, not value of, you know, I'm making an investment and it's going to still be worth $5,000. But, I mean, you know, if I spend $500, I can still get a really good playable guitar that's as good as, you know, something much worth much more. It just doesn't have quite all the finery and, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, they had the, um, the Gibson version, the ES Les Paul. Right? Yeah. Gibson version of the Florentine. I guess the Epiphone is really the Epiphone version of the ES Les Paul, but whatever. Um, it was $2,000 more expensive. Actually, it was $2,100 more expensive mm-hmm. than what I got. Yeah. And, I didn't play it. I wasn't going to have the guy get up on the top shelf for a guitar that I knew I wasn't going to buy. But right. you bought two I, guitars from him. I mean, you I should did, have made I him do it. <laughs> it. I was afraid, one, I, that I would really fall in love with it. And I knew there was no way in the world I was walking out of the store with that guitar. And that is the danger. Right. And the other thing is that I, 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 I'm sure it's an excellent guitar. It, but for somebody at, at my level, the $2,000 just doesn't make sense. I don't know. It depends on what you like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not there yet. I don't think I can get that performance out of the guitar. With yeah, I don't know. Sp- I, it's funny because I don't, uh, I mean, I've played some you know, like expensive guitars and it's like, I've never, nothing's ever really spoke to me any more than mine. Not that I, my favorite ones aren't necessarily cheap guitars, um, but they're also not like really top line things either. And, um, the ones that I've played that have been like really expensive guitars, it's just like, meh, it's not something I'd play. You know, I'd take this $800 thing off the shelf and that's what I would play more than, right. you know. So, um, yeah, and that, and that's how it's been for a long time. So, yeah, I don't know. I think there's the, the things that make them cost more aren't necessarily playability or um, quality in terms of just overall. It's It's other things. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, hey, to each his own. If somebody has... Five grand to <laughs> drop that kind oh, yeah. of coin on a guitar. Hey, great. Keep Gibson and everybody else PRS in business, you know? I mean, yeah. t- honestly, if I hit the lottery, I'd have a PRS. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm not being critical. Yeah, I probably, if I didn't want to throw around, why not? Mm. I just don't. And I don't think for, for me it matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. It's true. Yeah, ultimately there. Uh, but you're right. You teach his own and definitely not being judgmental at all. So, um, well, I think before we wrap things up, I've I got one more thing to say. I just realized that today is the fourth anniversary of my guitar playing. Woo! Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you rock! <laughs> uh, yes, I know. I don't know if I sound like a four-year player, but I am a four-year player. So uh, there we are. Um, so anything else you'd like to add to the conversation tonight, Jesse? Well, now I'm trying to do the math. Is how many guitars have you bought per year? <laughs> 2, 2.5. <laughs> Five. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I measure things. I, this is this is why I don't do drugs. <laughs> you have a much safer addiction, my friend. <laughs> yep, yep. I have an addictive personality, and yep. Let's keep it to guitars. <laughs> yep, keep it to guitars. So, all right. Well, now that I put that little point of shame out there. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Please don't forget to follow us at SST Show. Uh, you can follow me at CW Culp and Jesse at Jester 700. Let us know what you like about the show. Post a review, comment on um, YouTube or Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook too at Jester Cat. 
And until next time, folks, just keep picking and grinning. Goodbye. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 